Students. <laughs> yes, teacher. Students, why you all come so late? <laughs> must report you. Must say down all your names and send to MTA. <laughs> Actually, okay. Yeah. Okay. I am sorry for those of you who came early. We are starting a bit late because I know for a lot of you guys out there, you don't. You know, you're very young, you don't have any memory of this place, you don't, you never come to Knox before. But those of us who lived in the ancient days of the 2000s, <laughs> we remember. Okay, so, you know, one of the themes of this year's festival was, uh, you know, heritage. You know, LGBT heritage in Singapore. And this building is important to a lot of us. You see, way back, Nine years ago, in the year 2003, there was, um, there was a man called Mr. Mock, and Mr. Mock decided to start um, a sort of chill-out bar, and he started um, a bar right downstairs where the reading room is, you know, where the, this is a software company now, and uh, it was called Mock's Bar, M-O-X. And uh, it actually, it was, you know, it was at the time when the whole of, uh, you know, Tanjung Pada and, Chang and uh, Chinatown were developing, you know, uh, gay cafes because, you know, these heritage buildings, you know, you want to preserve their form. How do you preserve their form without bringing back all the Chinatown trades where you turn them into gay party places? Right? In the one use constituency too. <laughs> and, well, and actually it was a pretty... This Mox Bar was, you know, it was a wonderful place for gay people of like, various flavors. It was like, it wasn't like, um, you know, exclusively for people, you know, for twinks or for jocks or for leather people. It was actually, uh, or for women or men. It actually, surprisingly, ended up being a place where a lot of different kinds of queer people ended up mixing and, you know, and uh, mingling pretty easily. I mean, a lot of us will remember Bernice, um, you know, who was a uh, resident uh, drag queen uh, door bitch, as it were, who was the um, and bartender. You know, there was a big farewell party when Bernice finally decided to, you know, become to go start going to the gym and just become plain old Ben. You know, so bye bye Bernice, hello Ben. There was one of the co-owners who would hand out Belgian chocolates at midnight. And oh yeah, surprisingly, um, oh there were oh, there were a lot of uh, events that happened here, like a. Uh, Alex Powell, you know, held the 10th anniversary of his Rolling Bread blog um, celebrations here. There was also, let's see, the lesbian her story parties um, happened here. Safe Haven, uh, the uh, LGBT-friendly Christian uh, church group, like, uh, held, uh, held religious services here. Um, the Langi Pride Center had its library here for a while. Oh yes, I launched my book, uh, SQ21, the, about, about uh, coming out stories of queer people in Singapore here. Um, and the government actually gave this place an award because it was one of the first places, one of the first bars in Singapore to have uh, no smoking. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it was like, you know, and you know why? It was just because one of the guys involved who was starting out the bar was a doctor, so he said, no, there's no smoking. You know, yeah, you know, there are other things down here you can smoke. <laughs> Yeah, so this, um, unfortunately, due to the whole gentrification of, you know, heritage areas, you know, prices went up, and this place, and uh, Mox Bar ended up closing in 2008. Oh, this, Mox Bar was actually downstairs. This upper area, originally was called the Attic, then when it got bought over by, um, by Mox Bar, they called it Bianco, which is Italian for white. Um, yeah. But we're open to all colors. There were art exhibitions here back then, and still there are still art exhibitions now. Um, I remember once they were hold, while the people were partying downstairs, they were holding. Um, Action for AIDS was holding anonymous HIV testing uh, over here, and so I came up here and found out I was HIV negative. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> it, it's nice to be HIV negative. It's, it costs so much less. <laughs> yes. Well, I'm from. Okay. <laughs> well, anyway, I, I, a lot of you will know that you know contradiction has been happening since the year 2005. We've held, we've held various events here. We've held them very, and uh, the second ever contradiction was held uh, right downstairs, and it was really crowded, but it was really fun. Uh, and uh, yeah, back then we were all these like, you know. Those of us organizing, we were younger. 
you know. I'm not sure if you could say we were young, but you know, I was just out of university and I was like energetic and ready to take on the world. And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm a young punk. And then I realized like over the years, more and more people actually know my name. You know, like even sometimes the lady at MTA was like, hi, I'm Isha. Oh, young Isha. Damn it, even the institution knows my name. So I'm not a young punk anymore. I'm a part of the establishment. <laughs> Nanyang Technological University, which um, creative writing, and I'm very sad to say that Nanyang has the reputation of being Singapore's least cool university. I'm not sure if we actually, I don't think we actually are, but that has been our reputation for a long time. But teaching the students there, I realized look, well, there are actually people at Nanyang who are writing really well, and you know, a lot, and some of them just happen to be, you know, queer. Uh, so, I thought like, you know, how can I sort of inject some of that, you know, the old youthful vitality into contradiction? And, you know, I, why not invite my students to read at Contradiction? So, this year's Contradiction, it's got a dual theme. Um, first, we've got all these, um, the, the young people, uh, 25 years old and, and under, from various uh, institutions and non-institutions in Singapore, reading stuff that they've listened. And we, you know, we also have some heritage things. This is um, the gay, gay writing back from the 80s and 90s. Yes, Jay, I know that the, I know the Brits have been writing gay stuff since Shakespeare, but you know, in Singapore, we, you know, we've had a bit of a late start. Yeah, so we've uh, had a bit. Uh, yeah, she colonized us. Late <laughs> But, uh, so, we are going to, uh, so we do, uh, if you, those of you who have programs, you'll see that uh, we've selected some texts from the late 80s, early 90s, which, which say something about where we uh, were back then. And I realized, well, after doing this programming, I realized there was a slight flaw in my grand plan. You see, back then, the people writing in the early 80s and, uh, late 80s and early 90s, they were often very young and very angsty. And you know, people under 25 writing now, they're also very young and very angsty. <laughs> so tonight's show might actually be a bit of a downer. So um, there's, lots of, there's lots of alcohol back there. You know, yes, and you know, if you feel down tonight, I'm sure there's going to be lots of shoulders to cry on. <laughs> But no, don't, you know, I, I think it's going to be fun. This is going to be an informal thing. If you feel like getting up and going to the loo, if you feel like going up and, you know, eating food in the middle of a poem, that's fine, you know. Yeah, the, the person over here is going to have to deal with that. <laughs> uh, and the very first person we're going to have up here tonight is me. I'm not, I'm not reading one of my poems. Oh, oh okay. All right, sorry, Mia back there has, uh, has told me I have to collect donations. You see, we have uh, spent money on the food back there. Oh, by the way, Jasmine Sia, from, who's work, now working at uh, Yale NUS, um, and is a lovely poet, she donated um, all well, the Delhi France stuff. Uh, Everything back there is halal, except for the chicken cocktail, sausages, and uh, the alcohol. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, and we've, uh, yeah, oh yes, Nic Nicholas back there also bought the ice. And he, he's got to be selling some, uh, some of the books that we've got um, for sale. And, uh, yes, so to help us defray our costs, we do have a little piggy bank that we're going to be having around, you know. Just, you know, slide it slowly in. You know, if you've got trouble, just, you know, spit on it a little. <laughs> Yeah, the poem I'm reading, it's not actually by me. It's by the guy we sort of see as um, Singapore's first gay poet. The odd thing is, he didn't, he didn't advertise the fact that he was gay, but he was... Uh, but, but, and so it's very hard to like, find gay elements in his writing. But he was quite open about it in, within the literary community, and he was like, uh, yeah, people say he was like the best of the first generation 
of Singapore English language poets. His name was Arthur Young, and uh, he's, he passed away um, about about eight years, well, quite some time ago. It was about five years ago, I think. Uh, by, by then, he had already been putting. Um, in, his uh, partner died first. His partner's name was Keith, uh, a British man, and uh, every year since Keith had died, he'd been putting his uh, Keith's obituary in the papers. And of course, when Arthur Young died, there was a big obituary talking about the loss of a great Singapore poet, and there was a slight mention of Keith, his friend. Your goodness. For Keith. Your goodness, I sometimes light my anger with, is what you have. No one can burn it away. It is not for my discussion. I know when near you, I, feel my, I myself feel good. And this is enough for me, my friend. This is a lifetime friendship. The poem is short, inadequate, and, except for a word, totally redundant. And now for someone a little younger, may I invite to the stage Ms. Deborah Emanuel. Deborah is a Kukas performance poet, and she is also, and it's a uh, privilege. We've had her up here for the past two years. Unfortunately, this year she's going to Australia. about you and I getting on a plane to nowhere. We will start over and I'm trying to give you more time to tell me that it's going to be okay but this is about you and I dancing in the sky because we caught the sun but we won't be long because I will fall while you stay suspended, floating, good, too good. You are too good for me. <laughs> <laughs> 